Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about solving absolute value equations. By now we should all have an understanding that the absolute value of a number is the distance away from zero it is on the number line. So here we can see that both 4 and negative 4 are the same distance away from zero on the number line. So we can say that the absolute value of 4 is going to be the same as the absolute value of negative 4 which is, of course, 4. So let's take a look at a very basic example of an absolute value equation. So here we have the absolute value of x is equal to 13. Now this is not a very complex problem. and Most of you could probably solve this by just looking at it. But as the problems get more and more complex, it's important to understand the process of solving an absolute value equation. So in order to do this, I'm going to break the equation down into two different parts. Okay, So I know that one thing the absolute value of x could be is 13. So one portion of the equation, I have x equals positive 13. Okay? So that is just one portion. The other thing I know that the absolute value of x could be is negative 13. Right, so here I know that there are two possible outcomes for x, the first of which is 13, the second of which is negative 13. Right, so by splitting the problem up into two different parts, I can get rid of the absolute value and solve for x. Now let's try a, a little bit more of a challenging problem together. So now we're looking at the equation, the absolute value of the quantity 4x plus 1 is going to equal 7. Okay, so this is a little bit more complex than the problem we just looked at. Not too difficult, but it certainly is going to take a little bit more to solve. So just as we had done in the past, we're going to have to separate this problem into two different branches. Right? The first one is 4x plus 1 equals a positive 7. Right? I know that in order to solve this problem, I need whatever is inside this absolute, these two absolute value signs um, to be 7. Okay, so I can either have positive 7, right, or in the second way I break it up, I could have 4x plus 1 equaling negative 7. Okay, so I need whatever is in the absolute values to be either positive 7 or negative 7 in order to solve this problem. So once I've broken this down, this is basic algebra. Right? All we need to do now is solve for x. We can subtract 1 over here. We have 4x equals 6. x is going to equal 1.5. Okay, so here, if I were to go back into the equation and plug 1.5 in, I would get 4 times 1.5, which is 6, plus 1 is 7. So the absolute value of 7 equals 7. Let's take a look at the other problem over here. I have 4x plus 1 equals a negative 7. Well, how do I solve this? Exactly the same way as we solved the other one. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. I get 4x equals negative 8. Divide by 4, divide by 4 we get x equals negative 2. So here, if I were to plug negative 2 in for x, and I will just show you this quickly on the side, right? so I have 4 times negative 2 plus 1. All right, so I can plug this in. I have negative 8 plus 1. And now I have the absolute value of negative 7 equals 7, which of course is what we were looking for. Okay, so whenever we're solving absolute value equations, all we need to do is to break the equation into two parts. Now, before I let you off on your own, I'm going to show you one more example. And it's a specific case. Right? And it's something that you're definitely going to be, need to be looking for um, when you do these. 
So here we are looking at the equation 3 times the absolute value of x plus 1 equals 12. So here we run into a small predicament because we need to figure out what we need to do first. The first step here is not to break the equation down. The first thing we need to do is to get rid of the 3. Whenever we're solving absolute value equations, we need to have the absolute value by itself on one side of the equation. So this is actually a pretty easy fix. All we need to do is divide both sides by 3, and we can get the absolute value all by itself. So here we're still dealing with the absolute value of x plus 1. 12 divided by 3 is 4. All right. Now all we need to do is separate the equation into two separate parts. We have x plus 1. Now we can get rid of the absolute values equals a positive 4. That would solve the equation. And the other way we can solve the equation is if x plus 1 is equal to negative 4. All right. And this is a very basic algebra here. I'm not going to walk you through all the steps because at this point we should be able to do this. We're left with x equals a positive 3. And x equals a negative 5. All right. Either way, we can solve the equation this way. If we plug in 3 for x, we get 3 plus 1 equals 4. So the absolute value of 4 is, of course, 4. If we plug in negative 5 for x, we get negative 5 plus 1 gives us negative 4. The absolute value of negative 4 is 4. All right, so that, once again, there are two solutions to this problem. So now that I've walked you through the basics on solving absolute value equations, I'm going to give you a few to work on on your own. So here I've su supplied you with three additional problems to work on on your own. Remember, in order to solve an absolute value equation, we first need to have the absolute value by itself on one side of the equation. Okay. Now, be extra careful in solving these. I can assure you there's at least one curveball out there for you. Okay. Knowing what we know about absolute values, be careful that each one of these problems um, is, is solvable due to the absolute value loss.